Welcome to LT Outdoors, the channel with everything the outdoor world has to offer. Gotta be in a leather. Wow, I've never seen one that big. <laughs> Sun is coming up, Bob is going down. Look at that. Fish are all about and jumping all around. Let's hook up the boat, come on, let's go. It's time for LT Outdoors, I'm talking. LT Outdoors Might go hunting, fishing, metal detecting Might even do a little fortune too I'm talking LT Outdoors I hope you enjoy the show Get a load of that This is my little hanging wire. I hang them up there to dry when they're still really wet when I'm done trapping. You don't want to skin one out when it's wet because in order to stretch it, in order for it to be good to stretch, it has to be nice and dry. So I like to let them hang on this wire here just to dry them. Um, what you're going to want to do it the way I do, well you're going to need muskrat stretchers. If you don't have these you got to get them. This is a big part in uh, handling your fur. But I also use this when I'm doing my fleshing. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, you're going to need a good sharp knife. I use a good sharp fillet knife. Um, also, you're going to want a butter knife. Now, uh, you may be wondering why. I'm going to show you in a bit. But it, this is a really good tool for skinning or for fleshing muskrats. I, I'd never used one until quite recently. And it's better than a fleshing knife. So let's get at it. Most important part of the rat is the back. This is the best part of the rat. This is the fur that they use. So it's very important. I mean, you don't want to mess up anywhere, but don't mess up the back. The belly, if you make a mistake, usually you're okay. But what I do first, I make a cut by the leg. I break the front legs, throw them in my bucket. They snap real easy. They got brittle bones. And then I cut around back legs you don't want to break them you're gonna need them for leverage I just make a cut going all the way around just like this okay next cut I do I start at the back leg here I don't know why I like to start on this one right here but you make a cut going straight down to the tail make it as straight as you can remember guys you're doing this for a sale. You want your furs to look as uniform as possible. I get it down to the tail though and I cut straight through just like that. I go to the other leg and I do the same exact thing. I try to cut as straight down as I can and I go right into the hole that I just made so that I'm not making any other holes. Now comes the skinning part. These skin real easy. Um, my dad always said they're like a wet sock which they really are um it's what i found though to save you some time fleshing take your time skinning i mean don't rush rush but while you're doing it you can peel a lot of that meat away and a lot of that fat that you would normally have to flesh off of there but basically i'm just peeling the skin as i go and working it off the animal I like to personally I leave some of the skin on the tail it helps for stretching so I'll rip it off like that that way I end up with a rather than cutting it I end up with that piece of uh, leathery tail to hold it on and just skin it some more work around basically you're just peeling the skin off the animal just like you would anything else just be careful not to rip a hole and it's easiest if you don't tear through the guts you tear through the stomach and it becomes a little tougher still not bad though rats are hands down the easiest animal to put up okay now when i get down to here see after i've skinned all that i just like to cut right here i leave this that's just the you know the anal vent and 
just stuff you're not going to need. And then take your time. The stomach rips really, really easy. Like I said, you don't want to rip it. It just gives you more stuff to flush off. Not to mention the, the insides of a muskrat have a pretty stinky smell. At least in my opinion. I ain't as bad as a skunk or anything, but they got their own special smell. <clears throat> yep, tore it a little bit, but I'd already got the skin over, so uh, she's still tearing. Like I said, it's really, really fragile. That stomach f rips real easy. All right, now I'm up to the front legs. You just kind of pull it up, just like you would a sock, just like that. You always pull it as far as you can get it to go. And then you just want to work these front legs out. Just pull the skin all the way around these legs. You can feel where they're at and you just keep working around them. Once you get your finger through, you just pull it because you already broke them off. So you got a hole right there. Do the same on the other side. Now you're at the head. I like to, you always end up with these ear pieces, these chunks. I tear them off as I go. You can flesh them, they only take a second, but you know, it's a second that I can do right now and not have to worry about fleshing. So, yep, I just tear those as I go. And then, then comes some more cuts because you are coming up right there where it was tight. That is the ear canal. I had to cut through that. Same with right here. You can see where it's really taut. If I cut straight down, end up with a nice, nice hole. Didn't cut a hole in the fur, just the ear canal. That's what you want. A good skinning is when you can get it done without making extra holes or tearing holes bigger than they need to be. Next up would be the eye holes. You can tell they're coming by these right here, these little white pieces. But I just cut, I keep my knife flat against the bone as I'm cutting, just to ensure that I'm not, you know, cutting anything, any fur wide open. Now, it, a lot of times you do end up making a hole on the face. Don't worry, the face is not you know the most worthwhile but you do want to keep it as much intact as you can because it needs to hold on to the stretcher and that is actually how you make your most money they measure this from the head down to the tail from the back so basically if you cut a big chunk of that nose off you're losing you know you might go from a top dollar rat to a mediocre one just because you made a bad cut so don't do that I don't mind throwing. I don't have a, as you can tell, I don't have a floor. It's a messy barn. I throw chunks around. The cats come in and eat it while I'm in here anyway. Now the nose, I like to just kind of pull it down tight. You're going to have to cut straight across the lips. The lips can be a little tricky. Underneath the chin, just cut along that tooth. Again, cut along the lips. Now we're down to the nose. I like to cut straight down. You want to get a piece of that nose like that, because that'll hold on to the stretcher, and then just cut this right off, just like that. All right, now we got a good pelt. I'm gonna show you how to flesh, how to flesh it out. Okay, guys. Now, when I flesh them, this is how I like to do it. Like I said, take your, you want a butter knife. You need your your stretcher. I like to put my rat on the stretcher, just like this. You can see all the stuff that has to come off. Basically, if it's not skin, if it's not just the skin, it's got to come off. You want all these meat, meat chunks, fat chunks, but it's really easy. Um, just be careful when you're scraping against the legs and the ear holes and the eye holes that you don't rip them. Uh, it's easy to do, but unnecessary because there's not much around them. There's a little fat around the legs that I'm going to show you how I get off. It's real easy. Yeah, you just, I mean, the bre the butter knife is phenomenal. I can't believe I never tried this before, but it gets the stuff off real easy without, without making any messes. I mean, you're not going to cut through it with a butter knife. This stuff on the side, I like to cut. You don't feel like you need to scrape one way or the other. Um, 
I go sideways on the side pieces. It's however you can do this to get those to come off or to get any of it to come off. I mean, I'll go all over the place with it. In fact, I used to only go against the grain or with the grain, but I recently found out that if you start at the bottom um, and work your way up, I'm going to show you right now, these tail pieces, I used to have a hard time when I was a kid because I was always going like this. The best way for all this stuff down at the bottom is to go up with it instead of down. Um, this stuff comes right off like butter. If you go up with it. Plus, you, can, you got this tail you can pull against to give you some extra force. Because you can kind of tighten the skin up. Look at all that meat coming off, guys. That one's held on by some muscle, but it'll come off. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah, get all that off. You want this to be a nice, clean fur. The reason behind this is when you get this, to, when you're ready to hang this up, if you leave meat and fat on there, that stuff will rot and that'll ruin your fur. So basically anything that could possibly rot, you want to get off of there. Now there is a bottom layer of, it, it's another layer of skin. I used to try and get it off when I was a kid. Back then I'd mess up a lot of pelts. Um, because you don't want to go overboard. You don't want to take that extra, extra piece of skin off. You just clear what's on top. You leave all this extra skin alone. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it. See this side's a mess, but that's okay. Don't take long. Usually it only takes me a few minutes. It's gonna take me a little longer today because I'm trying to show you guys, so I'm slowing down a little. Now when I do the feet, I like to put my finger in the foothole that way i'm not i make sure my knife isn't getting too close um you got to get this fat that's all the way around these feet like i said you put your finger in there that just makes sure you're not going to tear the hole more with your knife got all this stuff on the side there's always more on the side it's kind of the shoulder stuff I used to do this with a fleshing tool and sure it worked but I'll tell you this the butter knife's nice because it's not you don't have to worry about making holes so much flesh and knife there's always a chance you could rip a hole but it's definitely a less chance with the butter knife and as you can see it comes off pretty dang good with it now sometimes you might find a hole when you're fleshing, you might come up on a hole and it will look like something you did. Don't always think that though. There is actually a lot of bite holes. Muskrats are pretty vicious. They fight over territory a lot. Breeding season they're fighting. So it's really nothing. It's not uncommon to come across rats that have tears in their skin. I find it all the time. I think I've already got probably 10 this season that had holes. I mean, you can see that's a scar. I mean, they got scars all over them that show up when you're cleaning them up. Especially these bigger rats like this. They've been around the block a time or two. Yep, there's another scar hole. That one's almost a hole. So I'm gonna stay away from that. I don't have to get all that off anyway. Again, I start from the bottom down here. 
at the bottom I start down low and work my way up and it works so much better than trying to scrape down way way better are being loud. I used to think something was wrong but they just like to yell. Basically, like I said, you want to make it look nice. That's why I take my time on these. Because it is a market. You're trying to make these look as good as you can for sale. That's what it's all about. You don't want an ugly piece going to market. enough right there guys uh, sometimes well I'm missing some right there a little bit of fat like I said it's important to get as much of that off as you can all right this is gonna be a beautiful skin then what I do is you pull it back up make sure you get that nose on there nice and straight Pull it down. This is a big rat. That's actually at the bottom of the stretcher. That's good. This will be a top dollar, top dollar rat. But you pull it down, put a hook. These are real pointy hooks on these stretchers. You push the hook through. It don't hurt to make a hole down at the bottom. All right, same thing over here. Now on this side, you usually have a couple, you have like a, piece here if you did it the way I did and a piece here so I put it through both of them that's ready to go that'll hang up and dry real nice and it'll look great when it's dried all right next up guys I'm gonna show you how to do a beaver LT Outdoors has been brought to you by RBM Jigs and Lake Effect Lure Co everything for the serious ice fisherman sportsman's connection mapping the outdoors since 1992 Wellman's Bait and Tackle. Check them out in Oscoda, Michigan. Cowboy Coffee Chew. A cup and a pinch. Crooked Bend. The leader for food plot mixes here in Michigan. LS Custom Game Calls. Check them out for incredible game calls. They have waterfowl and much more. And Shelly's Shirt Shack, where all the LT Outdoors merchandise is made. There's something you don't see every day.